Welcome my friends, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobuman. We have another video on a help desk example phone call in which we fix a WebEx sound issue. It's going to be an exciting one, it's going to be very educational and it's a real world example of something you would get as a phone call when you do help desk tier one. All right, guys, let's get into it. But first, real quick, please take one second to click that like button. This way, I'm not going to play any ads at this point. This makes a huge difference for me. I really appreciate your help on this. Thank you so much. And now let's listen to the call. And then after that, during the call, we're going to pause in the middle of it and I'll show you how to fix this WebEx issue. Thank you for calling Tech Support. My name is Irvin. How can I help you today? Hey, this is Bob. I, uh, I have, I'm having trouble with my um, uh, WebEx meeting. The audio doesn't work. I'm trying to use my headset, but I, I don't know what's going on. It's just that I've been told that uh, they can hear me, but I can't hear them. Or something's going on with, with my headset. I'm, I'm trying to use it for this WebEx. Either like It doesn't matter if I create a meeting or join a meeting. There's always the same issue with the headset. I can't. And it's a new headset I just got from my boss trying to use it here and uh, it's just it's just giving me trouble is this something you can help me out with I sure can uh, let me uh, let me uh, get your uh, PC name real quick there should be a, a PC information uh, on your computer for that it's it's okay it could be a computer name or a workstation name there might be even a sticker on your computer can you please give me that sure uh, here it is it's a uh, 35 c3 to 578 thank you very much for that. Do you mind if I take control of your computer just for a moment? I want to have a look and see what's going on. Sure thing, go ahead, no problem. Now, just real quick, I want to make sure the type of headset that you have, is it a USB one or is it the one that has two prongs or uh, two connectors, if you will? So it's usually, it's uh, um, if it's just a standard one, it's going to have one that's red and the other one is black and you plug it in usually in the front of the PC or is just a USB one? I have one of those that's just a USB one. All right, no problem. I'm, I'm taking a look right now. All right, let's pause the phone call here for a moment so we can troubleshoot, so I can show you how I would troubleshoot this. He mentions uh, audio issues. So every time somebody mentions audio issues, I would definitely look at the audio settings inside the computer. And noticed I specifically asked him if he has a USB, type of uh, headset or if it's just one of those standard ones with two plugs and uh, he said he has a USB one so we're just going to use that knowledge as our starting point all right let's look at the system settings we're going to right click on our speaker icon here I'm going to select open sound settings these are Windows 10 sound settings I'm not a big fan of this it is pretty simple and yes you can do several troubleshooting in here but I prefer to click on the sound control panel here which is the old school way of pulling up and troubleshooting system sound settings for Windows operating systems. So I'm going to minimize this WebEx here just so I can get that out of the way and not distract you with it. So as in uh, the first thing we see here is that we have real tech high definition audio. This is one of those audio systems that will be on pretty much every computer that has Windows operating system. I guarantee you that if you open up sound settings on your computer right now, you will have a Realtek high definition audio. And we know that this is default sound for that PC, meaning that everything that's built into the computer is going to use this and everything that is plugged into it as in specifically microphone or a headset through the regular 3.5 millimeter connector it's going to use Realtek so we can ignore that part of it right now because we're not going to use it we have to concentrate on a USB headset and he specifically you said the USB the only other thing that shows up here is this Plantronics C610 which is a USB headset and you can see there's a little you know there's a green check mark here that means that right now that Realtek is set as default I'm going to go ahead and change this Plantronics to default I'm going to select it I'm going to click set as default now I know for sure that everything on the system is going to use this playback audio as in speaker as default so we changed our speakers to Plantronics C610 which is the headset itself there is nothing else there so we know for sure that that is the headset that he is using now let's go ahead and click on recording here this is going to be set up for our microphone 
and here we go again we can see that he has a microphone either built in or plugged in somehow but you know if it's a laptop chances are that it's just a built-in microphone and it's again set to Realtek we don't want that we want to set it to our Plantronics and we're going to set it as default now you don't necessarily want to do this as set it, set things up as a default depending on preference of the customer but a lot of times to make sure that the issue doesn't uh, repeat itself this is what I like to do is set their main audio to default whatever that might be and I will of course double check that with the customer as well so now I know that my microphone is set to the Plantronics which is the headset and also our speaker is set to Plantronics which is the headset I'm going to click OK so now everything else that comes up should be using that as default now let's look at the Webex now keep in mind Webex is kind of tricky when it comes to setting up audio if I click on the little cog here and I click you know just to click on it to see what are the settings where are the settings here for the Webex and of course you can see this that there is a preference and once you open it up you assume that the audio settings would be here but they're not unfortunately you can see that there is account my personal room meeting join phone numbers calendars notifications video system but nothing talks about the audio the audio is actually um, set up when you start a meeting or join a meeting so let's go ahead and click start a meeting and this is going to launch our little start a meeting pop-up so with the start meeting enabled here I know our pop-up comes up we can see there are some things here that are flipping through and we can see that the, this is the audio setting right here we're gonna look at that here in a moment but let's look at this real quick you see how it says here use computer for audio a lot of times if you have a desk phone like one of those physical desk phones that are just sitting on your desk there chances are there might be some kind of integration there and that uh, you want to make sure that it's not detect it because you can use a desk phone for uh, Webex meetings and and whatnot especially if it's a Cisco phone uh, usually I uh, over IP phone which all the new phones are but in our case we want to make sure that use computer for audio is selected and uh, let's go ahead and select on our settings here that are kind of flipping through we're going to click on that and see what we have and here we have to make a minor change and change the uh, microphone here to make sure that it reflects our Plantronics headset so we're going to select Plantronics headset or you can click use system settings I prefer just to click it uh, microphone uh, Plantronics so if you're going to set up Webex only and only Webex to use this headset you would make sure that it's selected to the microphone and not use system settings so in case you want to use system settings defaults for something else um, basically what I'm saying is you can configure Webex only to use the headset as well again I'm going to double check this with the customer to see what his preferences are all right let's get back to the phone call all right sir so it, it looks like there's uh, just a configuration issue with the audio the headset is probably working just fine I went ahead and made the changes in the system and the Webex make sure that this is all set to use the headset most of the time now just keep in mind if you're going to use your PC speakers or if you have speakers connected to it these, these settings may have to be changed back but right now I set your headset to default so that way it's always going to use that for the time being um, if you'd like I can change it I can only change I can just change Webex to use it and nothing else no no that's fine I don't use the speakers at all I headset is fine I don't want people to hear me talking anyways or hear hear what other people are saying on the meeting anyways all right no problem I'll go ahead and leave it like that so it's all set to default now and it should work do you want to give it a shot and test it out sure let me uh, let me get my co-worker over here I'm gonna start a meeting real quick and test it uh, with her hey Susan you mind testing this with me all right thank you go ahead and join can you hear me yes yeah I, I can hear you fine too awesome all right cool thank you thank you for testing this with me hello yeah um, it's working it's working fine now so uh, th thanks for fixing that for me it was it was so annoying every time I joined the meeting it just didn't work no problem I'm glad to help um, is there anything else I can assist you with today no, that's it. Uh, you've been great help. Thank you so much. You bet. You have a good day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye.
And there you have it, guys. Another successful help desk tier one phone call handled like an IT professional. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Check out my channel. I have a lot more of this type of stuff. I'm already made a few of videos that are in this format. So if you if you want to check them out, I, I forget exactly what they were. I think one of them was on resetting passwords. The other one was on some other stuff. Anyways, I have so much I can't remember. But anyways, I try to make these videos at least once a week. Typically, they come out on Saturdays or Sundays when I have free time, uh, you know, from my job and whatnot. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Please share it with friends. Let me know what you think. If you just want to say hi, I you know I like I like those comments as well. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. You have a wonderful day. <clears throat> bye bye. Hello, my friends. My name is Irvin, also known as Kobo Man. This is a help desk type of tutorial where we talk about specific type of trouble ticket that may come through the service desk. And that type of ticket is usually related to some kind of a link not working. We're going to talk about that. And the reason I'm making this, although it seems like one of those simple tickets to do, it can become complicated, especially if you come across a link that you're not familiar with, like some kind of odd website. But before we do that, please take one second to like the video. I really appreciate it. It makes a big difference to me. And if you really like me, share the video with your friends. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys. All right, guys. So let's look at this ticket. I have this mock-up ticket that I created in this uh, service desk system, and it's called my email is not working. The uh, description would say, hi, my email is not working. This is my link. And then they show you a link and there's a link right there. We can click on it. We can check it out. That's perfectly fine. And then we have an attachment of an error. And if we click on that, it gives us a lot of clues to what the problem is. So I love seeing attachments of the errors because they can save me a lot of time when it, when it comes to working tickets. And we already, you know, we can already guess what the problem here is because we've seen this type of website before many, many times. Chances are we all use this type of website and we can see immediately why mail is not working their email is not working and if we click on the link sure enough it's not working because it's broken but as as we can see here we we know that we are just missing the l there so if we just type in l there just a sec type in l we can see that the email is working so we can simply come back to the customer or user and just say hey this is the correct link which is perfect and great. This is easy ticket to do and it's no problem, right? The situation what I wanted to talk about is related to when a user or a customer reports a link not working of a website that you're not familiar with at all. So we can fix this one easily just by adding L. But when we go to a website, for example, imagine if this was the problem here, this link up here. Imagine if that was the problem. How would we even know that this part of it is not missing? Just that eight. How do we know that? So we won't. We won't know that. It's not like we know every hyperlink for each website to know for sure whether the user is using that specific link. I mean, it can extend to, as far as we know, a limited length. So how do we deal with that specific issue? So let's pretend that this is a website that's not google.com. That's something totally different. Now we have to reach out to the customer and preferably this issue I would handle preferably over the IM or instant messenger if available within that company. If not, you may have to call the user and talk to them directly. That might be another option. And the way I would go approach this, I would reply to the customer. I would say, hello, my name is Irvin with Help Desk. I have your ticket about broken a link. And then if, if it's, again, if it's a website that we're not familiar with, we don't know for sure. Because the thing is, though, we click on the link and we also get the same error, so we don't know whether they're using the correct link or not, or if the website is down for sure. So we have to figure out first whether it's the broken link, because 
90% of the time it's the wrong link that they're using. And it's not necessarily their fault or anything like that. We have to make sure that we're respectful towards the user or the customer because this type of stuff happens, you know, especially if they're pushing back saying that it's not, you know, it's, you know, there, there's, there is the correct link, but that's okay. We're going to get to that part here. So hello, my name is Irvin with help desk. I have your ticket about broken link. And then we can say, um, if we're suspecting a wrong link that they're using is anybody else in your group having this issue or we can say is anybody else in your group able to access this website All right so we can send that off to them and wait for their reply but you know since since it's a website we don't know we, we kind of want to resolve this as quickly as possible we don't want to necessarily wait for them to receive an email from the ticketing system for the notification wait for them to reply this and that that i mean that's fine if you know or if they happen to be watching their email all the time but chances are they're not this is what i'm saying you might want to reach them over the im if possible or if you want to call them so a lot of times they come back and say this customer yes that is the correct link right so they may come back and just say that then then what do you do and if you're still suspecting uh that it is the you know that it that it is the wrong link you can say can you please check with one other person just to be sure and then they might come back and say uh, usually after a little bit because they are you know chances are they are probably checking you know and then um, you know if they come back and say yes it's working for them so this is your clue right here immediately we immediately have like even higher suspicion that it is indeed a a wrong link a wrong link that they might be using if is if this is working for somebody else and not for them and it's obviously not working for us that's because i Irvin, and the customer and the customer we both have the wrong link that was provided by the customer and then if they keep saying if they keep insisting they are using the same link as me you can say can you please show me the screenshot of a working website so you got to be you got to be very careful with this you got to be kind of uh, systematic in a way but also respectful at the same time you can't just tell them no you are using the wrong link that's not that's not the way you deal with uh, customers or users on the help desk so customer would you know reply with screenshot and then you would look at that screenshot and then chances are that that screenshot will have that clue to you of what the correct link so you're looking at it and then you're like well you are unfortunately you are using the wrong link because you're missing like an eight or in our case of the email here you know we can go back to this if we look at it we can say well in this case you're missing an L so that indeed is the wrong link unfortunately and that would resolve that sure at some point you will come across an issue where it's a website that it, it you know the website is down for everybody so and and that's different you know if you you know especially if you're familiar with the website you'll know yeah this is not normal this and that but in this case this is how you deal with a customer or a user that simply has a wrong link for whatever reason it happens you just got to be respectful and be systematic about it and very professional about it this comes up a lot on help desk wrong link tickets it's very very common thing 
All right, guys. I hope you, I hope you like this video. I tried to make it as as a real world example as possible and explain it in a way where it's easy to understand. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any questions, I have lots of help desk videos. They're very, uh, very useful, very popular. A lot of people like them. And I hope you have a wonderful day, okay? All right, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, wait, wait. I almost forgot to mention, guys. I have a lots of written stuff that's related to help desk, network administration, system administration, all kinds of IT topics. I don't even remember how many I got, but it's on my website. It's at CosmicNovo.com. So if you go there, you can see that I have a bunch of different written versions of all kinds of different IT stuff that you can read. If you're, if you would, if you would rather read um, some of this stuff, then you can certainly do so on my website. All right, guys. Thanks again. You take care now. Bye-bye. Hello, my friends. My name is Irvin, also known as Kobelman. This is an example of a help desk or a call center phone call in which you deal with an angry customer. So this is incredibly important to know because you got to have the skill in order to resolve their issues. Sometimes a customer is so angry that you got to deal with it in a special way. So that way you can resolve this issue without it being escalated to your manager. So this is an incredibly important video, not just technically, and I'll show you what the problem is with the computer, but also in a way to deal with it. So it's a social video in a sense. All right, guys, let's have a look. But before we do that, please take one second to like my video. This really makes a huge difference. And that way I'm not going to play any ads for you. So what's going to happen, I'm going to show you the customer's phone call, an example phone call. And then I'm going to pause the video and show you how do I fix it. And most of all, on how I dealt with this angry customer. Again, thank you so much for your support and let's enjoy. Thank you for calling tech support. My name is Irvin. How can I help you today? Oh my God, look, I need you to fix my computer, all right? Look, everything is broken. I can't open anything. All right, sir, no problem. I'm sure I can help you with this. What seems to be uh, the issue? You what know, are I'm you, trying I... to open up these Word documents, you know, all my Excels, nothing is working. It's just it, the, the icons kind of changed. I, I don't know. When I click on it, nothing happens. It just doesn't want to. Look, I need this fixed right away because I got important things to do, all right? All right, sure, so, hey, sir. sir, no problem. I'm sure I can help you. I'm sure we'll fix this for you. Just uh, uh, just give me a few moments here. I hate to do this to you, but can you please give me the PC name? That way I can help you as fast as, I, as, fast as possible, all right? That way I can possibly take over your computer and just do it for you, all right? P PC name? What is this PC name thing? There should, sir, there should be a, um, an icon or on your desktop or something that says PC information or maybe a sticker on the computer that with a PC name. All right, all right. Let me let me see. Hold on, hold on. Let me see. Oh, I I, I see it. I see it. I see a sticker here. All right, great, sir. Can you please give me that? That way I can just help you real quick. All right, it's uh three five seven zero C O T A F L. All right, thank you, sir, very much for that. All right, all right, I'm going to make sure that I look at your computer. Okay, so what's going to happen is I'm going to uh, request to take control of your computer, and all you got to do is just click accept if there's a pop-up or anything like that. Just make sure you click accept on that. All right, all right, all right. All right, I see it. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you very much for accepting that. All right, I'm going to have a look now, and I'm going to fix it for you. All right, don't worry. Just, just hang tight, please. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's pause the phone call for just a moment to see what's going on here. And you can see that the customer here is trying to open these documents and it just keeps asking for something to open it with. Uh, these are Excel and Word type of documents. You can see they are uh, extension on them is ODT and ODS. These are basically um, uh, open office type of documents. They can also be opened with regular Microsoft Office. But in this case, we're just going to reinstall open office in this and this is going to resolve the issue. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Of course, in a business type of environment, you would have a different type of tool. But in my case, I'm just going to install the executable that I've downloaded with OpenOffice, and this will fix it. Okay, sir. Hello, sir. Thank you very much for holding. Look, I, I found the problem for you. Uh, I just need a few moments to fix it, but I guarantee you I will fix it for you. The thing is, though, the uh, Microsoft uh, Office or uh, the software basically used to... Uh, open these programs for you uh, is removed for some reason. I'm going to have to reinstall it. Unfortunately, this may 
need a restart. Oh my god. Sir, I'm really sorry, but I guarantee you this will fix it. Um, it, it may restart, it may not, but if it does, it shouldn't take too long, but I guarantee you will fix it, all right? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to reinstall it, and then it should work for you. Just give me a moment here. All right, fine. All right, sir, I'm initiating it right now. It's happening, and uh, it, what I'm just kind of waiting for it to install, um, just, you know, just ask you real quick, do you need to save anything just in case the computer decides to reboot on you? Because a lot of times when you install these big programs, it likes to reboot for some reason. I don't want you to lose anything else, you know? All right, let me check. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're fine. You're fine. All right, sir. Thank you very much. And thank you again for being patient with me. I guarantee this will fix it for you. You just need a few moments and possible a restart, but it should be good to go. And uh, hopefully this, this computer is fast, so that way we can get back to them real quick. So I'm just going to keep clicking next. And so far, it's going really quick. And again, a uh, business you work for may have different type of tool that deploys these type of applications. You might want to go in there and do a repair or whatnot if it is Microsoft Office. But in this case, um, it is open office. But either way, we're going to resolve the issue. All right, that was really quick, which is good. That means we can get back to the customer real quick. And you can see now that we can open these uh, just documents. These are just fake documents that I created for the sake of video. And you can see now that it's working. All right, let's get back to the customer. It looks, yeah, well, it looks like it installed and uh, I don't see any reboot uh, requirements. So I think you're good to go. Um, you want to check it out before I... Let me, uh, let me have a look real quick. All right. All right, all right, looks good. All right, good. All right, thanks. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. All right, no problem, sir. I, you know, I, I understand the frustration. It, it happens, but you know, you're good to go now. Is there anything else I can help you with? No, I'm good. Thanks. All right. Thank you for calling Tech Support. You have a good day. All right. You too. Bye. 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 -bye. There you go, my friends. That's how you handle a, an angry customer. I uh, I made this video as best as I can in order to show you guys how to do it because it is kind of awkward to, uh, uh, I guess pretend to be the tech support and pretend to be the customer as well in order to create this type of video. So I hope it came out good. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. I also like to see when people just say hi. I really like that too. And uh, if you want to check out my channel, I have a bunch of different videos on help desk, desktop support, system administration, network administration, and all kinds of other IT stuff that you can learn from. And I also have, if you're interested in this type of stuff, I also have more videos in this type of format where it shows you how to deal with certain issues and technical issues that you may come across as a help desk technician and again if you're doing just call center type of stuff these videos are also helpful all right thank you so much for watching please share this video if you have a second click the like button i really appreciate that as well thank you again and you have a wonderful day bye bye Hello my friends, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobuman. In today's video, it's all about help desk. We're going to learn how to use an example ticketing system. And then I'm going to also show you four different examples of a phone call that you might get as a help desk employee. These phone calls will show you how to handle the calls and also how to troubleshoot the call. It's a very good video for those trying to get into help desk as a starting point in their IT career. Guys, Please take a one second to click the like button. This way I'm not going to play ad at this point at all, but you clicking the like button really makes a difference for my video. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, let's get into it. This video is designed for new people to help desk tier one or tier two. What we will learn in this video is how to create a ticket and how to work a ticket in a ticketing system. Keep in mind there are many, many different ticketing systems out there available and a lot of them are proprietary, meaning the company that you work for will have their own ticketing system, but lately or most recently they've all been web-based, just like this third-party ticketing system that I'm about to show you. And when it comes to navigation, working the tickets and this and that, it should be very uh, very much the same as you would do when you work for somebody else. So this is going to be very educational for people who are about to start working on a help desk or just tech support where they use a ticketing system.
So let's get back to the first thing we need to do. We're going to create a ticket in this ticketing system, but we have to familiarize ourselves. Keep in mind, you are new at the company and you've never experienced this before, chances are. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to uh, look for. Well, this is typically what it looks like. You have a system that's open like this, uh, typically web-based, and then on the left-hand side, you got a few different tabs that you can select. First one is the main queue. What you're looking at here, and when I click on all open, and what shows in the middle is all tickets that are open currently. These are tickets that come through. And then next one is assigned to me. And if we click on, you can see that you haven't been assigned any tickets whatsoever. And then if we click on unassigned issues, you can also see there. However, if you keep if you go back to the all open, that means they are all there. That means that there haven't been worked yet, even if it's been assigned. So and then of course we have incidents down here, and this is going to be based off a top of ticket. And then we got service requests, changes, and problems. So these are all different categories for these tickets that are there. Now, not to confuse you or to lose you, let's go ahead and create a ticket because this will show you what the ticketing system is about. So let's say um, this reporter here, which is Kobuman1, he is the user that reported all three of these issues. These are all issues that he has. So let's see how he did that. So he went to a system, and he's got a probably similar system uh, that, he, that we see here, and then he clicked on create a ticket or submit a new ticket. And the first thing that they're going to do is select an issue type, which is right here. Don't ignore this part where it says project this is just because i'm an admin to this so ignore this what they're going to look at first is issue type this is what's going to ask you and they're going to either have a drop down here or they're going to be able to type in the type of issue that they have so they can just type in report an incident and if they select that for example that's what what's going to be selected so whatever it is that they have chances are there's either a an article on how to fix it themselves if it's like some kind of a minor software issue but they in general they will have a way to search for their problem and once they do they will come across that problem they would select it so for example if they would just type in get see help it's going to show up and then they can select that at the same time if they type in like for example name of the website or a program it's going to find that as well, and then they can select that, and that way it's going to be routed to the support team for that specific application, website, system, or software. See, that it's very self-explanatory. So, and the next thing, once they figure out what the problem is and select the correct issue type here, they can type in the title of it. And it's kind of confusing here that where it says summary, but it's actually just uh, a title. So let's go ahead and pretend that this is a test ticket and we're just going to type in test so that way we have uh, a good so we can track it so we can see how it shows up in the system and then we're going to type in test again because we're just learning how to create a ticket right here and it's going to be very simple if we scroll down there will be other uh, things you can put in there for example a user can attach a screenshot and if they click here they can just add it you know browse it this and that typical they would upload a screenshot of the error if they have and then they can select the component and then if they're savvy enough they'll be able to figure out okay well what is the issue about and they would select that so let's say they you know it's some kind of actor directory issue they can just select that and then assignment here you can see that it's automatic we can leave that this is some of those one of those admin uh, issues and this is not uh, what uh, a user would see and then you can also uh, create a ticket on behalf of somebody else so I'm going to create a ticket on behalf of Kobuman1 which is the same person that reported the previous issues that way um, if, uh, if a user is not able to create a ticket for themselves you can do it on their behalf as well another reason to create a ticket is to also keep track of internal things that you do and you need a record of it so you know, doing tickets just as an internal part of uh, what you do is a good way to uh, uh, just have a record of uh, some kind of change that you've done on a computer or PC or whatever. And then next thing we have is priority. Um, uh, well, actually, we do have approvers, but this is related to whether somebody needs to be approved, for example, to have an access to a specific server, 
uh, whether they are approved to have email or instant messenger or even if they're approved to uh, get new software or if they're approved to get new hardware right so and then we have priority here and priority is kind of self-explanatory if a big website is down chances are they're going to select the highest priority or you know it's if it's affecting a lot of people they can just select highest priority but if it's nothing big they can just select lowest priority or whatever you know and then of course urgency is uh, also kind of similar to that which would I don't know why they have it twice but you know if it's a website down it's going to be of course critical and then it's going to impact a lot of people impact very uh, important if it's a lot of uh, people it's critical and it's the highest priority it's going to be expensive widespread if it's just one user requesting something it's going to be minor so and then pending reason this is um if you're working on a ticket and then you need a pending reason why it needs to be approved this and that like for example somebody's requesting something um uh, that they would deal with that product categorization and this and that this is usually automatically populated by uh, the system itself users wouldn't typically deal with any of this they would just put in a basics you know ticket and then you would have to figure this out if it needs to be uh, you know if, if it needs to be um, uh, dealt with or categorized uh, there is a category here optional categorization we can just select connectivity in case we are working with you know a big system downage and then of course there are labels and you can create your own labels you know okay and then we're going to click create ticket now we can see on the right side that there's a notification that came up that's typical in a ticketing system if you're working the system if you have it open you would get a notification that the ticket came through so if we refresh this if i click on all open it's going to refresh it it may take a second here but it's going to populate with the new ticket we just uh, submitted it depends on how fast the cloud is or the storage uh, where the, uh, the ticketing system is at. It may take a moment to come up. Uh, let me let me hit the refresh button here. And uh, there it is. There's our test email. And at the same time, you and your group, including the user as well, will get an email notification that a ticket came through. And... Uh, and that would look some that would look something uh, like this. Here's our three other tickets that are already in the system. The other one just came through as you saw. So you can see that there is a new ticket that came. So you get a, a desktop notification, and then you get email notification. All right. Now we learned how to create a ticket. That's very simple. Now let's go ahead and uh, work a ticket. Here's a really good one we can uh, pick. So once you're in the main uh, queue, is what they call here, uh, you can just pick any of the tickets and assign it to yourself if you're allowed to do so. Typically, that's what happens. You can pick up tickets, work them, or sometimes a manager assigns a ticket to you. But this time, we have the permission to assign tickets to ourselves, so we're going ahead and do that. We're going to select this middle one. And then we're going to assign it to ourselves. This is going to be slightly different, uh, you know, depending on the type of software you use. But typically what you want to look for is something like this, where it says assignee. I want to click on that, and then I'm going to assign it to me. I'm going to click on that. And sometimes there's a save button or this and that. This particular system doesn't, and it's just going to assign it automatically. So let's go ahead and go back to our queue, which is click on all open here. And we can see now that it's assigned to me. And uh, I'm going to go back to it, and then we're going to now work it. So how would you do this? There are a few ways of, of working a ticket. Uh, this is going to depend on a preferred contact method that the user has. If we look at this ticket, uh, it's not very detailed, right? And if we click on here, view request in portal, uh, you know, a lot of times it would open it up and there will be more information here, but it kind of looks the same as the other one. So we're just going to go back here. The thing is, though, a lot of systems would specify what type of preferred contact method they would have. For example, I prefer to be contacted with email or uh, there would be their email address there or something like that. I prefer to be contacted with IM or, or do I prefer to be contacted by the phone? So user would typically specify that and, you know, there would be more stuff uh, detailed information about them. This system, unfortunately, doesn't have that information. The only thing we have is ability to reply to customer directly here. So this is what we're going to do. 
it says here the issue is I have two monitors both have the same picture so that means that it's a configuration issue and we can help them deal with that uh, if if they are outside of your company let's say you're doing tech support you know for somebody else in a different state you're not on site you're not there to help them you can simply say if you've never worked with this uh, person before you can say hello my name is Irvin at, with tech support tech support at STL Missouri so you know you want to tell them hey my name is Irvin uh, I'm with tech support or whatever your name may be and I am at this location so that way they know that you are uh, you know that person it's, it's an introduction it's a simple introduction and then you can say I have your ticket about a monitor right and it's simple you tell them who you are where you at and that you have their ticket about a monitor this is what you typically do if you're contacting them first time through email or through like for example instant messenger or even if you call them this is something you, you have to let them know who you are and why you're calling them or why you're contacting them since this is a message through the system through the ticketing system you don't necessarily have to introduce yourself because they know that the system that they submitted a ticket through uh, somebody's reaching out to them because of that right and then you know if you can help I mean this is a remote type of thing if you can take control of their uh, PC and resolve this issue for them that would be ideal but if you don't well, I mean what can you do um, well you can just at least suggest uh, have you tried you know what is it expanding your desktop onto second monitor that's usually the problem when it comes to this right and this is one of those things that you can ask the customer if you can take control of their computer that would be ideal however if you happen to be on site if you happen to be on site that would be even better so um, you can say may I stop by to take take a look when would be good for you so that way you can go there directly and just resolve the issue and then now we're going to just click save this should send an email to the customer and uh, you know that should reach out to the customer in some way whether it's they having to have the system up and they get a notification or they would get an email uh, from the system saying hey uh, this tech guy Kobo man is trying to reach out to you this guy named Irvin actually is, is trying to reach out to you or both so usually it would be both so they would get a communication from you so the next thing you would do is add an internal note means uh, that's a, a note for you and the people that work for you or the, not the work for you or with you if they want to know what's going on with that ticket they can look up your ticket and see that you have reached out to user and awaiting feedback right so you can be more detailed about this this is just the basic navigation and notage of a ticket so what we have done here is reached out to the customer we have created an internal note so that everybody can see that what you've worked on and what kind of work you've done when it comes to this ticket so let's say your manager is like hey uh, what's going on with this ticket they can look it up and see what you've done you know and um, if it's if it's uh, something you can resolve on site you can say uh, configured dual monitor and then click save and now since you've resolved the issue we have configured the dual monitor at this point it's resolved now we can close the ticket right we can go ahead and close it and in this case we have to go over here on the right hand side where it says waiting for support if we click on that it gives you a bunch of different options for the status of the ticket you know you can see that whether you escalated a ticket uh, you know waiting for support canceled or completed we're gonna set it to completed sometimes it would say resolved or this and that and now the ticket 
is completed and closed. And by the way, notice this little eyeball here. That's a watch option. That means how many people are actually viewing and watching this ticket. We can see that both of these guys are watching this ticket. So that means how many people are viewing it and working on it, which is kind of useful, actually. So that way you can be like, hey, you know, ping them or, you know, send them a message. Hey, are you working on this too? You know, this and that. And uh, all right, let's move on to uh, another ticket that we can look at. And then if we click on all open tickets here, it's going to bring us back to the, the queue. We can see now that the other ticket is gone. It's, it's simply gone. It's closed and you'll no longer see it in the queue. But we do have other tickets we can work on, so let's do one more, which is a bit different, and this is a website down um, ticket. So this is kind of important. Our website is down. We can't access our main website, and then we can see that the urgency is critical. So, of course, we're going to have to prioritize these critical tickets. Now, let me see. Does this system actually say in the queue anywhere that it's a critical? It doesn't. So the only indicator you have here is on the left hand side. It's kind of these icons. And, you know, this is kind of unfortunate uh, that I couldn't show you that, that, you know, um, there, there might be some other indicator that it's a critical issue. All you got to do is, all, the only thing you can do is go by whatever the summary is or whatever the title of the ticket is. So you kind of have to use your own judgment. In our case, I wouldn't have worked the first ticket first at all, I would have worked this one first. So you got to prioritize that. It's very important. But once we click on it now, we can see that it's critical. So of course, we're going to um, contact them again. But before we do that, since this is a critical, we may want to um, do something else real quick. And this is going to depend on, on your business, whether you're the only one working there or whether you actually want other people involved. So there are options for that as well and if you look on the right hand side here we can add participants if we click here and add participants if your manager for example is joe uh joe joe schmo <laughs> schmo did i spell that joe schmo let's do that joe schmo we're going to add him and then he can watch or even if we have bob it's a boy uh, you know, as a co-worker and he's working with you as well, we can add them as participants so they can follow what's going on, right? So that's pretty cool here as well. And then we can have, um, let's go ahead and work this ticket real quick. I'm going to reply. And again, there are no other way to contact them. So I have to contact them through the system. Otherwise, I would have called them, uh, messaged them and this and that. And then what I would do here in this case, and this is just an example so we can work the ticket, but there are many things that you might want to ask when it's a big issue like this. Uh, the first thing usually I would say is uh, how many, I would say people are impacted. You don't want to say users. Usually that's something that IT would use within itself. You would want to say how many people are impacted. And then... And uh, when was the last time it worked? Are you using the correct link? You know, stuff like that that would help you resolve this a big of an issue, right? And then later on, uh, you know, if you do realize that it really is a big issue like this uh, support team, um, for this specific website that they may be uh, talking about uh, may need more information. For example, host names, IP addresses, this and that. So I'm going to start with this. Uh, typically, you would want more, but you would have to know what the website is and this and that. And this is just going to be depending on the work environment that you're at. Here we are learning how to use the system, not necessarily resolve issues uh, because we don't have enough information, right? So we're here learning how to use a ticketing system and that's that. And then, of course, you add an internal note right away and says, contacted user with uh, requesting, I'm sorry, requesting more information. Now, this is an internal note, and this means that only you and the people that work the system can only see it. So you can say user this time because we are talking to IT people who might read this. This is for your own note, work note, uh, internal note, and for the people that are IT, user cannot see this at all. So it's okay to say user. 
Okay, now that we're waiting on that, of course, is a priority. This is something you would actively work on, but we're just going to leave it like it is for now. Now, let's see. Uh, the, the, there are different issues. There are different options here for the this ticket right now, and that's because the issue is literally selected as a problem. Now we have different things, and this is going to you know depend on the type of work environment that you're working at, and then uh, you can see that now we have an option just just to close it. But that's only if it's resolved, and then there's cancel, and then there's under review. I'm not sure why it would be under review. That's kind of a weird option to have in a ticketing system. But I guess it could be related to some kind of an access request uh, for something. But the fact that it's just reported as a problem is kind of confusing. Anyways, now we know how to create tickets, how to work tickets, and how to assign them, which, by the way, we haven't done here. So we haven't assigned it to ourselves. Maybe that's why the option there was a bit different. Well, maybe not. Anyways, again, there are many, many different uh, ticketing systems, many third-party systems, and you just have to kind of adjust to them accordingly. So let's go back and see what else is open. We can see that this one here is assigned to me, that I'm uh, working on it. Let's see on the next tab. Assigned to me, it says zero now, but now it shows up as one because it took a little bit to refresh and then we got other tabs that you can get into, but these are the basics. These are the basics of working and working a ticketing system that you must know before going to work for a help desk of any sort. And of course, you can look at your own statistics here, and that option is not here. But I think if I click here, uh, let me see if I can find it real quick for you guys. Cues, back to projects. Usually managers can only see a report but then maybe we can view some reports here. Reports, workload, and yeah, so if you're a manager or, or sometimes even as just a TR1 help desk, you may be able to see your own uh, progress, and here it is. You can see that I have one issue uh, that I've resolved. Any more detailed? So yeah, that, that just allows you to you know look up other people's tickets. Uh, satisfactions. These are all statistics that managers only look at. Of course, you want to, SLA is also, you know, those metrics of how fast you resolve issues, this and that. But what I taught you so far are the basics you need to work the system as an IT help desk tier one. So let's go ahead and look at what happened during this phone call and then we're going to stop it in real time and then I'm going to show you what happens on the back end so meaning that what is going on with the person working help desk while they're talking to the user thank you for calling tech support my name is Irvin uh, what can I assist you with today hi I, uh, I, I for some reason I can't log in to Outlook Outlook keeps asking me for a password I don't know why I uh, I'm not sure what's going on here. Sure. Does it um, does it uh, give you an issue whenever you try to log in anything else, or is this just this specific system? Uh, let me let me try. I I think it's just Outlook, but I'm not sure. I don't even know why Outlook keeps asking me for the password, but I think it's just Outlook. Let me try something else. Oh yeah, yeah. This um, oh yeah. This other system is also giving me problems. It keeps asking for the password. I don't know why. I did have a little trouble, uh, like I may have like mistyped the password this morning. Okay, well, no problem. Let me uh, let me look up your account. Uh, what is your login ID for this? My login ID is Irvin underscore uh, C A N. Okay, all right, I got it pulled up here. All right, let's pause that for a minute. Now we know the name of this user, so let's go ahead and look it up in Active Directory to see what's going on with his account. But before we do that, please take one second to click the like button. I really appreciate that. That way I don't have to play any ads for you here, and that way you are supporting my channel. It only takes one second. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, let's go ahead and open up Actor Directory. And within Actor Directory on the left-hand side, you can see a folder that's called Users. If you select that, 
if you select users you can see that a bunch of different users and groups show up in there so you can scroll down and look for that login or the person's name however the easiest way to look somebody up is if you right click the users folder and select find in here you can type in the name of the user and he said Irvin underscore C A N so it's going to click find now and here it is we found the user we can simply select it double click it and it should pull up users account so let's see what's going on with that he said he can't log in so the next thing we're going to look up is the password so we're going to click on the account if we suspect that user is locked in the account tab here we can simply click on the check mark like this where it says unlock account select apply or OK and this will unlock the user's account now we can get back to them and let them know to try again it wouldn't take my password I, I, I recently changed it I think I changed it like a couple of days ago so I may have mistyped it a couple of times is that why oh yeah the, that makes sense so happening? Uh, if, if you mistype password once you don't want to keep trying it usually it locks out after you try more than three times uh, but it's not a problem I can unlock you uh, would you like me to reset the password as well or do you just uh, want to give it a shot without me resetting if you it? can uh, if you can unlock me that would be great I'd like to see if I can because uh, I don't feel like changing the password again you know how it is it's like you, you try to like come up with a new password and then it, it's like you're just sitting there trying to figure out well which one do I want to use this time like you know so uh, yeah if you can just unlock me that would be great okay no problem I uh, I have it unlocked right now I want to want to give it a shot and see if it works all right hold on let me uh, let me try this here okay I I think I'm good now Outlook came up now and it's uh okay it looks yeah okay my new <laughs> emails are coming through so okay great uh, that's good I I uh, thank you so much. I appreciate. That. All right, no problem, no problem. I'm I'm glad to help. I'm glad that worked out for you. Uh, is there anything else I can help you with today? No, that is all. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. No problem. My pleasure. Thank you for calling Tech Support. You have a wonderful day. You too. Bye bye. Bye. Well, there you go, my friends. This is how you fully handle a help desk call in which you would unlock user accounts. Of course, there are other things you can look at. If you go to the account, you can make some changes to it when it related to password. If you want to change their password, you can change it here. If you select user must change password at the next logon, is something what I would um, uh, highly recommend in a business environment. So this is a part of security. You want the user to have their own password. So I highly suggest that you check user must change their password at the next login because after you change it, you give them a temporary password, they should be able to set their own. In order to change the password, we have to go back to the users folder and then find the user and then right click it and then select reset password. However, this is kind of counterpoint to what I said earlier that you know, if this is populated with thousands and thousands of users, it may not be easy to find. However, if you do right click on the users folder, select find, and do the thing I told you earlier is to type in Irvin CAN so we can find this user. Here, since we found it already, we don't have to dig through the Active Directory. A lot of people actually don't show this on their videos when they show how to reset the password. Is that now, since you already found it, you don't have to dig and kind of like, you know, your eyes are starting to dry out because you're trying to find this user. You can just find it here and then right click and reset password. And we're going to change the password to something temporarily. And then again, make sure this is checked. User must change the password at the next login. And then if their account is locked as well, you can check that as well. And then just click OK and now it says the password for Irvin has been changed. Today's video we take a look at a call handling for help desk tier one in which case user has a slow computer. I will show you the call handling and I will show you what I did to resolve the issue as well. Friends if you have a one second please click the like button I really appreciate it this way I'm not going to bother you with any ads at this point 
I really appreciate that. It means a lot to me. Thank you so much. So let's get to it. I'm going to play the call and at certain times I will pause the call itself and show you what I'm doing on the back end in order to help this user. This was going to be a fun video guys. Let's get into it right away. Thank you for calling Help Desk Tier 1 Support. Uh, my name is Irvin. How can I help you today? Hi, my computer is running really slow. Is there something you can help me with this? For some reason, it's just so slow today that I can't do anything. No matter what I do, everything, everything is really slow. Sure thing. Uh, what, what's going on? When did you start having this issue? It started happening this morning. It was fine yesterday. And then today, for some reason, it's just very, very sluggish. I can't do anything. I really need this uh, to be fixed so I can do my job. All right, no problem. I can have a look uh, to see what's going on. Can you give me your PC name? My PC name? Uh... Yeah, it should be if, it should be under your PC information, or even there might be a, a sticker uh, on your computer or something like that. That it, it'll be either combinations of numbers or letters. If you can give me that, please, I'd appreciate it. Sure, I think I see it here. Um, it says T M. C three five six five eight three zero. All right, thank you very much for that, uh, sir. Do you mind if I uh, take control over your computer just for a moment? I want to see what is going on and see if we can uh, uh, figure out what's causing this issue for you. Sure, go ahead. All right, let's pause the phone call just for a second here. So the user is talking about a slow computer. So it's a slow computer situation. So what is the major reason for a slow computer? In a business environment, most of the time when a computer is slow, it's because of an update. So let's get a look at the updates that we can look up here. And we're going to just type in updates and check for Windows updates. And sure enough, guys, we have some pending restarts for an update for a Windows 10 update. So what typically happens is that Windows tries to update, or the computer itself tries to update overnight, but for some reason it's not able to do so when the computer is not being used, meaning that it tries to do this in after hours when the computer is not being used. But chances are, if the computer was turned off, shut down, asleep, or any of those reasons, it probably couldn't install these updates. So now we got to get back to the user and let them know that this is what was the cause of this and explain to them what we can do to resolve this issue. Of course, if your company has a specific tool that pushes updates to your computer, you would also check that to see if anything failed because it's not just Windows updates that could be causing this, but updates for other software and chances are uh, there is a different way to control that within the company that you work for. You would, it would be company specific, so you would have to check that as well. Other reasons for a slow computer is highly unlikely in a business environment. You know, for example, like not enough RAM, this and that. That that's not usually what happens in a business. That's something that home computers may have issues with. For a business type of computer, they're going to be up to spec, and the main reason for it to be in slow is updates. Of course, there is another reason, you know, being a virus, but getting a virus in a business environment is so unlikely, it's unbelievable. So, updates, main thing, let's get back to the customer and tell them about that. All right, sir, so what I found is that uh, you were, your computer was trying to get updates, but it's not able to. So, at this time, we need to reboot your computer so you can finish Windows updates. This typically happens whenever uh, your computer is either asleep and it can't get a chance to get its updates overnight. Usually computers get updates overnight when people are not working during, um, you know, after hours where, you know, it's not a, you know, peak business hours or anything like that. So, but sometimes when the computer is asleep or turned off or if it's shut down, uh, it may not be able to get its updates. So what we got to do is just kind of wait for it to finish its updates. And I have a feeling once we reboot, it should be done. It'll probably be much faster. But yeah, that's what usually happens and uh, that should resolve your issue. So go ahead and reboot. And if that uh, if that doesn't work, then uh, we can help you further. See if that works. All right, I'll give it a shot. Um, all right, I'll go ahead and reboot now and then see what happens. All right, great. Thank you so much for doing that. I appreciate that. Okay, looks like I'm uh, looks like I can log in now. 
All right, great. Go ahead and log in and we'll see how it goes. Now keep in mind, we just rebooted the computer, so it may be a little bit slow in the beginning, but it should be fine afterwards. Uh, you know, usually when we're rebooting the computer, it kind of clears the memory. So in that case, it may take a little bit just to log in, but afterwards it should be fine. Okay. All right, I'm logged in. Great. All right, let's see see if see if uh, see if it's running any better for you here. All right, I'm checking. All right, so far so good. Tell you what, it's definitely faster than it was uh, this morning. I don't. Okay, yeah, it, it it seems to be fine now. So, uh, let me see if I can pull up my email and a uh, couple other systems that I use just to make sure before I let you go. Sure thing, no problem, sir. Take your time here. Okay. Okay. I I think I'm good now. Thank you so much. It it's uh I appreciate your help on this. Hey, no problem, sir. Again, you know, sometimes this just happens whenever a computer shut down. Uh, the best thing, the best advice I can give you uh is that whenever you're at the end of the day, whenever you're done using the computer, just go ahead and like reboot it or sign off cuz sometimes the computer won't even update properly even if you're signed in to the computer for some reason. But the best thing to do is just to reboot the computer and uh that you know, that should uh, kind of be a, a proactive thing we can do here to kind of prevent this type of thing from happening. All right, will do. Thank you so much. I appreciate your help. All right, no problem. Have a good day. Thank you for calling uh, Tech Support. Bye-bye. All right, guys, let's get into it. But first, real quick, please take one second to click that like button. This way I'm not going to play any ads at this point. This makes a huge difference for me. I really appreciate your help on this. Thank you so much. And now let's listen to the call. And then after that, during the call, we're going to pause in the middle of it and I'll show you how to fix this WebEx issue. Thank you for calling Tech Support. My name is Irvin. How can I help you today? Hey, this is Bob. I, uh, I have, I'm having trouble with my um, uh, WebEx meeting. The audio doesn't work. I'm trying to use my headset, but I, I don't know what's going on. It's just that I've been told that... Uh, they can hear me, but I can't hear them, or something's going on with, with my headset. I'm, I'm trying to use it for this WebEx, either, like, it doesn't matter if I create a meeting or join a meeting, there's always the same issue with the headset. I can't, and it's a new headset I just got from my boss, I'm trying to use it here, and uh, it's just it's just giving me trouble. Is this something you can help me out with? I sure can. Uh, let me, uh, let me uh, get your uh, PC name real quick. There should be a, a PC information... Uh, on your computer for that, it's it's okay. It could be a computer name or a workstation name. There might be even a sticker on your computer. Can you please give me that? Sure. Uh, here it is. It's a uh, three five C three T O five seven eight. Thank you very much for that. Do you mind if I take control of your computer just for a moment? I want to have a look and see what's going on. Sure thing. Go ahead. No problem. Now, just real quick, I want to make sure. The type of headset that you have, is it a USB one or is it the one that has two prongs or uh, two connectors, if you will? So it's usually, it's uh, um, if it's just a standard one, it's going to have one that's red and the other one is black and you plug it in usually in the front of the PC or is it just a USB one? I have one of those that's just a USB one. All right, no problem. I'm, I'm taking a look right now. All right, let's pause the phone call here for a moment so we can troubleshoot, so I can show you how I would troubleshoot this. He mentions uh, audio issues. So every time somebody mentions audio issues, I would definitely look at the audio settings inside the computer. And noticed I specifically asked him if he has a USB type of uh, headset or if it's just one of those standard ones with two plugs. And uh, he said he has a USB one, so we're just gonna use that knowledge as our starting point. All right, let's look at the system settings. We're going to right click on our speaker icon here. I'm going to select open sound settings. These are Windows 10 sound settings. I'm not a big fan of this. It is pretty simple. And yes, you can do several troubleshooting in here, but I prefer to click on the sound control panel here, which is the old school way of pulling up and troubleshooting system sound settings for Windows operating systems. So I'm going to minimize this WebEx here just so I can get that out of the way and not distract you with it. So as in, uh, the first thing we see here is that we have Realtek high definition audio. This is one of those audio 
systems that will be on pretty much every computer that has Windows operating system. I guarantee you that if you open up sound settings on your computer right now, you will have a Realtek high definition audio. And we know that this is default sound for that PC, meaning that everything that's built into the computer is going to use this and everything that is plugged into it as in specifically microphone or a headset through the regular 3.5 millimeter connector it's going to use Realtek so we can ignore that part of it right now because we're not going to use it we have to concentrate on a USB headset and he specifically you said the USB the only other thing that shows up here is this Plantronics C610 which is a USB headset and you can see there's a little you know there's a green check mark here that means that right now I'm going to go ahead and change this Plantronics to default I'm going to select it and I'm going to cult now I know for sure that everything on the system is going to use this playback audio as in speaker as default so we changed our speakers to Plantronics C610 which is the headset itself there is nothing else there so we know for sure that that is the headset that he is using now let's go ahead and click on recording here this is going to be set up for our microphone and here we go again we can see that he has a microphone either built in or plugged in somehow but you know if it's a laptop chances are that it's just a built-in microphone and it's again set to Realtek we don't want that we want to set it to our Plantronics and we're going to set it as default now you don't necessarily want to do this as set it set things up as a default depending on preference of the customer but a lot of times to make sure that the issue doesn't uh, repeat itself this is what I like to do is set their main default whatever that might be and add with the customer as well. So now I know that my microphone is set to the Plantronics, which is the headset, and also our speaker is set to Plantronics, which is the headset. I'm going to click OK. So now everything else that comes up should be using that as default. Now let's look at the WebEx. Now keep in mind, WebEx is kind of tricky when it comes to setting up audio. If I click on the little cog here, and I click, you know, just to click on it to see what are the settings where are the settings here for the webex and of course you can see this that there is a preference and once you open it up you assume that the audio settings would be here but they're not unfortunately you can see that there is account my personal room meeting join phone numbers calendars notifications video system but nothing talks about the audio the audio is actually um, sing or join a meeting so let's go ahead and click start a meeting and this is going to launch our little start a meeting pop-up so with the start meeting enabled here, I know our pop-up comes up. We can see there are some things here that are flipping through and we can see that the, this is the audio setting right here. We're gonna look at that here in a moment, but let's look at this real quick. You see how it says here, use computer for audio. A lot of times if you have a desk phone, like one of those phones that are just sitting on your desk, there chances are there might be some kind of integration there and that uh, you want to make sure that it's not detect it because you can use a desk phone for uh, Webex meetings and and whatnot especially if it's a Cisco phone uh, usually I uh, over IP phone which all the new phones are but in our case we want to make sure that use computer for audio is selected and uh, let's go ahead and select on our settings here that are kind of flipping through we're going to click on that and see what we have and here we have to make a minor change and change the uh, microphone here to make sure that it reflects our Plantronics headset so we're going to select Plantronics headset or you can click use system settings I prefer just to click it uh, microphone uh, Plantronics so if you're going to set up Webex only and only Webex to use this headset you would make sure that it's selected to the microphone and not use system settings so in case you want to use system settings defaults for something else um, basically what I'm saying is you can configure Webex only to use the headset as well again I'm going to double check this with the customer to see what his preferences are all right let's get back to the phone call all right, sir, so it, it looks like there's uh, just a configuration issue with the audio. The headset is probably working just fine. I went ahead and made the changes in the system and the WebEx make sure that this is all set to use the headset most of the time. Now, just keep in mind, if you're going to use your PC speakers or if you have speakers connected to it, 
these change the settings but right now I set your headset to default so that way it's always going to use that for the time being um, if you'd like I can change it I can only change use it and nothing else no no that's fine I don't use the speakers at all I headset is fine I don't want people to hear me talking anyways or hear hear what other people are saying on the meeting anyways all right, no problem. I'll go ahead and leave it like that so it's all set to default now and it should work. Do you want to give it a shot and test it out? Sure. Let me uh, let me get my coworker over here. I'm going to start a meeting real quick and test it uh, with her. Hey, Susan, you mind testing this with me? All right. Thank you. Go ahead and join. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you fine, too. Awesome. All right, cool. Thank you. Thank you for testing this with me. Hello? Yeah, um, it's working. It's working fine now. So uh, th thanks for fixing that for me. It was it was so annoying. Every time I joined the meeting, it just didn't work. No problem. I'm glad to help. Um, is there anything else I can assist you with today? No, that's it. Uh, you've been great help. Thank you so much. You bet. You have a good day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. And there you have it guys, another successful help desk tier 1 phone call handled like an IT professional. And this is an example of a help desk or a call center phone call in which you deal with an angry customer. So this is incredibly important to know because you got to have the skill in order to resolve their issues. Sometimes a customer is so angry that you got to deal with it in a special way so that way you can resolve this issue without it being escalated to your manager. So this is an incredibly important video, not just technically and I'll show you what the problem is with the computer, but also in a way to deal with it. So it's a social video in a sense. All right, guys, let's have a look but before we do that please take one second to like my video this really makes a huge difference and that way i'm not going to play any ads for you so what's going to happen i'm going to show you the customer's phone call an example phone call and then i'm going to pause the video and show you how to i fix it and most of all on how i dealt with this angry customer again thank you so much for your support and let's enjoy thank you for calling tech support my name is Irvin. how can i help you today Oh my god, look, I need you to fix my computer, all right? Look, thing is broken. I can't open anything. All right, sir, no problem. I'm sure I can help you with this. What do you, uh, the, the issue, you what know, are I'm you... I'm trying I... to open up these Word documents, you know, all my Excels, nothing is working. It's just, it, the, the icons kind of changed. I, I don't know, when I click on to, look, I need this fixed right away because I got important things to do, all right? All right, sure, sir, hey, sir, no problem. I'm sure I can help you. I'm sure we'll fix this for you. Just uh, uh, just give me a few moments here. Right? I hate to do this to you, but can you please give me the PC name? That way I can help you as fast as, I, as, fast as possible, all right? That way I can possibly take over your computer and just do it for you, all right? P PC name? What is this PC name thing? Well, there should, sir, there should be uh, um, an icon or on your desktop or something that says PC information or maybe a sticker on the computer that with a PC name. All right, all right, let me let me see. Hold on, hold on, let me see. Oh, I, I, I see it, I see it, I see a sticker here. All right, great, sir. Can you please give me that? That way I can just help you real quick. All right, it's uh, 3570COTAFL. All right, thank you, sir, very much for that. All right, all right, I'm going to make sure that I look at your computer. Okay, so what's going to happen is I'm going to uh, request to take control of your computer, and all you got to do is just click accept if there's a pop-up or anything like that. Just make sure you click accept on that. All right, all right, all right. All right, I see it. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you very much for accepting that. All right, I'm going to have a look now, and I'm going to fix it for you. All right, don't worry. Just, just hang tight, please. All right, all right, all right. Let's pause the phone call for just a moment to see what's going on here. And you can see that the customer here is trying to open these documents and it just keeps asking for something to open it with our Excel and Word type of doc, our Excel and Word type of documents. You can see they are uh, extension on them is ODT and ODS. These are basically um, uh, open office type of documents. They can also be opened with regular Microsoft Office, but in this case, we're just going to reinstall open office in this and this is going to resolve the issue. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Of course, in a business type of environment, you would have a different type of tool. But in my case, I'm just going to install the executable that I've downloaded with OpenOffice, and this will fix it. Okay, sir. Hello, sir. Thank you very much for holding. Look, I, I found the problem for you. Uh, I just need a few moments to fix it, but I guarantee you I will fix it for you. The thing is, though, the uh, Microsoft... Uh, 
office or uh, the software basically used to uh, open these programs for you uh, is removed for some reason. I'm going to have to reinstall it. Unfortunately, this may need a restart. Oh my god. Sir, I'm really sorry, but I guarantee you this will fix it. Um, it, it may restart, it may not, but if it does, it shouldn't take too long, but I guarantee you will fix it, all right? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to reinstall it, and then it should work for you. Just give me a moment here. All right, fine. All right, sir, I'm initiating it right now. It's happening, and uh, it what I'm just kind of waiting for it to install, um, just, you know, just ask you real quick, do you need to save anything just in case the computer decides to reboot on you? Because a lot of times when you install these big programs, it likes to reboot for some reason. I don't want you to lose anything else, you know? All right, let me check. Uh, yeah, I don't No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're fine. You're fine. All right, sir. Thank you very much. And thank you again for being patient with me. I guarantee you this will fix it for you. You just need a few moments and possible restart, but it should be good to go. And uh, hopefully this, this computer is fast, so that way we can get back to them real quick. So I'm just going to keep clicking next. And so far it's going really quick. And again, a uh, business you work for may have different type of tool that deploys these type of applications. You might want to go in there and do a repair or whatnot if it is Microsoft Office. But in this case, um, it is open Office. But either way, we're going to resolve the issue. All right, that was really quick, which is good. That means we can get back to the customer real quick. And you can see now that... We can open these uh, just documents. These are just fake documents that I created for the sake of video. And you can see now that it's working. All right, let's get back to the customer. It looks, oh, well, it looks like it installed. 